Hi and uh, welcome to this video uh, about the glossary widget XML file. So in this video we're going to take a look at what the XML file that uh, the glossary widget uses to build this. Um, how does that actually look? Um, the, the easiest way to understand the XML file structure is actually to open it in uh, in your browser. So I switch to this one here and um, I'll just close everything down. Basically, an XML file is um, is a file with some tags that tells uh, that that kind of a starting tag and an ending tag that will contain information and that uh, an XML parser can understand and make use of. So the the first line here is just some technical stuff, so you don't need to worry about that at all. Um, then you'll have s something you can see. We have a little plus, so we can fold it out, and that's called glossary. And we, if we take a look, we have a glossary up here and we have a glossary down here. So this is the opening tag and this is a closing tag. So everything contained between these two tags, uh, these two nodes, are actually the glossary. Inside the glossary nodes we have separate nodes for each letter. So we have letter ID A, B, C, D, etc, etc, all the way down to Z. So if I, for example, wanted to add uh, characters that are native to my language. I would simply copy the letter ID node for set, uh, paste it under, uh, below here, and then uh, add my letter. Uh, could be a German U or Swedish uh, A or something like that. Basically, whatever you, you need. And uh, it will automatically uh, add the letter at the end of the band here. Uh, should you have as you can see, there's there's quite a bit of room left to add letters, uh, in case that um, you'll add a lot of more letters. It will automatically scale this down, so the band will never be wider than the border right here, and the buttons will just be smaller. Um, but basically, this allows you you could add numbers one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine as well, um, and it's pretty flexible. So if we switch back to the XML. Um, if we fold out the letter A, this contains word IDs for all the letters that we see uh, in our glossary. So we'll just do like this, oh, and like this. So we can see we have word ID for Aboriginal and we have a word ID for Abor Aboriginal right here. Um, so all the words you see here are the words that are presented, represented here in the widget. If we fold out the word ID for Aboriginal. We have yet another node called Desk, which is description. Um, and in here we have our text. Um, this text here is the exact same text as you're seeing in the in the widget for Aboriginal. Um, as you can see it has some formatting here. Uh, this text is bold and there's a paragraph. Um, this is actually done by inserting HTML tags and uh, if we take a look here, this is the HTML tag for bold, and this is the closing tag for the bold. So what this tells the XML parser is that everything between these two tags, which means this text, will be bold. Um, yep, pretty easy stuff once you get the hang of it. And of course if you know XML or HTML it's pretty oh, it's it's not gonna be a problem for you. Um, there's an editor provided for you in case you have no idea how to do this and this will help you make these uh, more fancy and style descriptions uh, and, then, and hopefully it will be easier for you to, to make this work. But if we take one more look here, we have a special little tag here called CData. This is the start tag for CData and this is the end tag for CData. What C data is is actually <coughs> this. This tells the XML parser that anything between the starting C data tag and the closing C data tag is to be interpreted as one uh, instance of data. Because once the XML par, if we didn't have C data, when the XML parser would come down to this B bold tag, it would kind of break the logic because it would think this had something to do with an XML file and it couldn't understand it. So when we add the C data stuff it tells the parser just treat everything in here as one node and disregard any of the tags that you see in here. 
So this um, is needed if you are applying formatting to your text. If we just wanted to have regular text with no, no formatting at all, we could ignore inserting C data tags and just write the text directly between the description start tag and the description end tag. You can see, I think there is, uh, we'll have one down here somewhere. I'm trying to find one without, here we go. Here we have a node that just has a plain description. There's no C data because there's no styling of the text at all. And if we just switch over and see what does the Amish word look like here, you can see the text looks pretty much like um, like like the other text in the widget. Actually, it's totally the same. Uh, the only difference is there is no underlined words or bold words or paragraphs or whatever. So, if if your need is just to have text like this, then ignore all the C data stuff, ignore all the HTML stuff, and just write your text directly there. Um, there's another node, we'll find one with an image here, um, called IMG, and this defines the image that you wanna uh, show in the widget. So for my action script word, the description is what is seen here, and I have a, a, a JPEG image called ascode.jpg. Um, the widget will put this at the top, sorry, at the bottom, um, let's see, we'll find action script here. At the bottom of the uh, description text, uh, this is the default location for any images. Uh, you can move it up at the top. This is done by adding a special property to the image tag called position equals top. Um, so when the widget encounters this in the XML file, it will say, okay, I need to place the image at the top of the description instead of at the bottom. And in that case, it would look like, let's see, you find, what, what was it, alcohol. Uh, we'll see the image uh, up at the top of the description instead. So this is what it looks like in uh, using IE9, but you can't edit anything here at all. This is just to show you the structure, basically. So I use Adobe Dreamweaver to edit my XML files. Um, if you don't have that program, you can use any other XML editor of your choice. Um, or you can use Notepad, which is pretty good to this stuff for this stuff, actually, also. Uh, don't use Microsoft Word or anything like that, because Microsoft Word adds a lot of uh, formatting behind the lines, and you can't really see it. And once you get the text in uh, to the widget, it will just look rubbish. Uh, I'm sure you probably have tried it when you copy paste text from Word into Captivate and, and text captions, etc. And you you get all kinds of weird formatting and indents, and it's just uh, Word is a very very good program for uh, doing word processing. But once you get to have to copy the stuff to another program, then it's uh, yeah, then it's not so good as as we could hope for. Um, anyways, here it's. Uh, Let's say that I wanted to have a new word below the word Aboriginal. I would just copy the entire word ID for one of my existing uh, nodes, uh, words, sorry, and I'll skip down and I'll paste it in here, and uh, we'll just say ABC. So now we have a new word ID that's called ABC, and the next step would be to enter some data. Um, just delete what we have. Let's see. There we go. And then, uh, so ABC is a great little song. Oops, little song that you can hear small kids singing at school. So it's probably not the best description, but uh, I guess that will have to do. So. Right now we have a word ID called ABC and we have a description called ABC is a great little song that you can hear small kids singing at school. Um, we'll click save and then I'm just gonna try and open the project, the widget. Um, and it, as you can see we now have a word over here in our list called ABC uh, and we have a description. So this is um, this is basically this is basically what you need to do. Um, 
the initial setting up of your entire glossary will probably take a while um, but, but once you have it set up for the first time you can most likely reuse parts of it in, in other courses or it's um, anyway it beats looking at a dull PDF file or a static page or whatever you you're used to uh, to using when when it comes to glossaries so um, yep oh you can place links as well let's see there we go there's a link to Adobe uh, right now I just opened it directly in flash player so the link won't work um, oh it did actually work hang on there we go um, so it's pretty powerful, it's pretty flexible, and it's um, just a matter of setting it up once and then um, you're good to go. The uh, written documentation provides uh, a bit more detail about how you use the, um, the editor, for example, and how you edit the XML file manually. Um, this should give you a pretty good insight into using uh, the widget itself. Um, the standard or, or my XML file, Glossary XML, is also supplied with the widget, so you can use that as a reference and uh, and basically to, to find out how you want to make your own. So that should be it about the XML file, and I hope that you found this useful.